If you have followed my channel for the last couple of months, you might know that I own a CR10 and already did some modifications like the E3D Volcano hotend to be faster with printing big parts. I still think that hotend and feeder setup is just not optimal to use the huge print volume efficiently. For this reason, I added an E3D Titan Arrow Direct Extruder to my CR10, which I'll be showing you how you can do that on your own. In the first part, we'll start with flashing the bootloader and a custom version of Marlin to the CR10. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. The upgrade of the CR10 with the Titan Arrow extruder will be split into two parts because I had the feeling that it would be otherwise too long. So in this part, we'll start with upgrading the firmware on the CR10. The reason for this is that even though the CR10 already runs a version of Marlin, you can't change any settings and save them on the EEPROM because this feature was deactivated by Creality. We'll also need to change the type of thermistor in the firmware because the Titan Arrow extruder uses a different type as the stock CR10. If you wouldn't do that, the temperature readings wouldn't be accurate. Even though if you don't plan to upgrade your extruder, upgrading the firmware might be a good thing because it adds features like linear advance, a great manual leveling wizard and being able to run the printer with higher accelerations. I'll be using my custom modified version for the Titan Arrow in this video, but the process is exactly the same if you want to use the firmwares you can find in the Facebook groups or on other online resources. If you own a normal CR10, you'll need to flash a bootloader first because otherwise you won't be able to upload new firmware. If you own a CR10S, the bootloader is already pre-installed and you can simply follow the steps uploading a custom version of Marlin at the end. In order to flash the bootloader, you'll either need an ISP or an Arduino Uno. Since many should have an Arduino somewhere, just as I had, we'll use this method. You'll also need some female to female and a female to male jumper wire. Links to all of these items are down below in the description. At this point I need to warn you that the following steps will void your warranty, if there ever was any, and potentially ruin your printer. So if you brick your CR10, don't make me responsible for it, I warned you. Let's start with flashing the bootloader. I've also linked a written tutorial on how to perform these steps down below. In order to flash the bootloader, we need to get access to the control board, which is in the electronics box. Unplug the mains cable and remove the screws on the bottom. Then remove the screws from the side so that the PSU is loose. Carefully remove it from the enclosure and pay attention that you don't rip any of the short wires. Now you need to switch the USB V-Rack jumper to USB. Next, we need to prepare the Arduino Uno that it can be used as an ISP, so download the Arduino IDE and install it. Connect the Arduino Uno board to your PC and make sure that it's recognized. Choose the Arduino Uno from the list of boards and select the right COM port. Select File, Examples, Arduino ISP, Arduino ISP. Now upload the sketch to your Arduino Uno and the board should be set up for the use as an in-system programming device. Now put the Arduino next to the MLC control board of your CR10 and use the female to female jumper wires to connect the programming pin headers. Double and triple check that you connected everything correctly before you continue. If you put the boards side by side, it's really only connecting pin 1 to 1, pin 2 to 2 and so on. The only pin that differs is that the reset pin of the MLC needs to be connected to the digital pin 10 of the Arduino. Take a look at the written instructions for the pin layout. Now we need to add the Sanguino board to the Arduino IDE. Select File, Preferences and add the following URL which you can also find in the description. Now select Tools, Boards, Board Manager. Enter Sanguino into the search and install the latest version. Make sure the Arduino Uno is plugged into your PC and remember which COM port it uses. Now also plug in your MLC control board that it has power. In the Arduino IDE, select the Sanguino under boards and the Admega 1284P 60MHz as processor. Make sure that under ports, the Arduino Uno is selected and not the MLC board. Finally select Arduino as ISP under programmer and start bonding the bootloader which should be done in a minute. 
If it doesn't work, make sure that you have selected the right COM port, wired the boards up correctly and flashed the Arduino Uno ISP properly. Now your CR10 should be ready to receive custom firmware. Disconnect the wires, reset the jumper to VRAC and close your electronics box again. Now download the custom Marlin firmware that you can find in the description, extract it somewhere on your PC in a folder that is called Marlin and open Marlin INO in the Arduino IDE. Connect your PC to the CR10 control board and turn on your CR10. Again, make sure that Sanguino is selected as a board and the proper processor is chosen. Select the COM port of your CR10 and upload the firmware. If you work with the Arduino IDE for the first time, you might need to install the U8 glib library, which you can easily obtain via Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. Now enter U8 glib and select and install the library. Give it another try and it should work now. I had some issues from time to time with the connection failing, but restarting my laptop and removing the SD card before every upload solved that issue. In my opinion, the Marlin 1.16 release is way easier to navigate through the menu, especially for preheating and moving the axis. In order to make adjusting temperatures even easier, I designed that Prusa style knob that you can download on Thingiverse and even add to an unmodified CR10 and probably plenty of other printers. I have already mentioned earlier that I prefer a manually well-leveled bed over auto bed leveling. The custom version of Marlin includes this nice leveling wizard, which will subsequently move the printhead from corner to corner so that you can level each point. Preheat your bed and nozzle, retract the filament and make sure that the nozzle is clean and nothing oozes out. Now start the wizard and go at least twice around the build platform and make sure that it's perfectly level. The other nice feature with which I still play around is Linear Advance. This changes the algorithm that is used to determine how much material needs to be extruded so that it's not proportional anymore to the movement speed. If you have set this up properly, you can get rid of the over extrusions you often see in the corners of your part. If you'd like to see a separate video on that, please let me know. So that's it for the first part. In the next video, I'll show you how you can add an E3D Titan Arrow to your CR10. If you plan to buy a CR10 or a CR10S and want to support the channel, then take a look at the affiliate link down in the description. If you guys liked the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and I'll see you next time.